I don't know exactly the name of this village, but I know this is, at the moment, is abundant village. Uh, about, I think, more than 40 years ago, the people of this village have to leave for somewhere else. Sand dunes treated this uh, village, and then they have to leave this village. Here, uh, we have 120 days wind. It is famous in this area. It comes from the border of Afghanistan. Yes. Sand dunes buried this village. Nasser Nick Bey is a fighter. He works for the Jihadi Sazandegi Ministry, which means fight for reconstruction. He's an expert in natural resources, and what he's actually fighting is the desert. A desert that goes wherever the wind blows it, driving people from their homes and villages. NASA works for the government to make sure that the recommendations of the International Convention to Combat Desertification are properly followed. Between meetings, he's out on the front line, checking how his troops are doing in their struggle with the desert. As you see, both sides of the road, now it is fixed. Before, I mean 30 years ago, it was nothing here, only sand dunes. Now the area is fixed, and uh, most of the people back to the villages, and some of them behind of these uh, fixing sand dunes, they started again their cultivation. Come on, this well has water, you can see. And I will put one stone in it, and you, you can listen the voice of the water, look. The Iranian people have lived with the desert since time immemorial. Over 90% of the country consists of arid or semi-arid land. Through the centuries, they have built and maintained their own irrigation systems, canats or underground channels with access wells to carry water from the mountains. On the edge of the village, the water from the canats comes up to the surface and runs into small ditches. Hazanabad is another small village which has been abandoned after a long struggle with the sand. The ten families who used to live here were forced to leave when the canat dried up. This one was used for drinking water. It's about three or four meters deep. So where was the canat? 20 meters higher up. Was it a deep one? The main well was 20 meters deep, and the water ran down to here. This a small well, it will dried, this one, at the first time, and after that, the canat, which was coming from the upside of the mountain, and it was uh, dried because the uh, level of the uh, the groundwater goes down, and in this case, the overexploitation of the groundwater is one of the main causes of the desertification. This old man was living here, and also his father was living here uh, 50 years ago. He is a farmer. <laughs> We are glad to meet you here. <laughs> Welcome to Iran. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. 
When when he married, he was in in this room. But I got to give him in your day. Hold on. They they this is their sitting room. This is their sitting room, and there was in a in bad girl with it. Yes, and uh, if you see, you can see the na natural ventilation here. You got to give bad girl in your day. The wind is coming from up to but down point. and flows this direction. And here will be cool, naturally. Today, farmer Nasrallah lives just a few hundred meters from his old house. The people of Azanabad dug a new canat for themselves a little way off and built a new village. I'm angry. I'm angry. During lunch, NASA finds out that Nasrallah was one of the first people to take part in a government program to stop the march of the desert by allocating land to farmers in most need. Nasrallah's struggle with the desert begins anew each day when he arrives at his field, a small piece of the desert he's been given some 10 kilometers from his village. He's had permission to dig a well here, so long as other farmers can use it too. There's a network of irrigation channels here which can be directed towards any one of the fields. This area now consists of some 60 hectares divided between 12 farmers. In just a few years, Nasrallah has grown pistachio trees and he sells the nuts directly in the marketplace. He also grows alfalfa, a crop that's used to feed cattle, which helps stop the overgrazing that used to be a problem in this semi-arid zone. The overgrazing, I hope, we will be finished and they will uh, cultivate the, uh, I mean, the fodder for their cows. The desert land is converted to this land which you see here. Uh, five or six years ago, it was desert. It was nothing here, really nothing. Before he had half a hectare in the village with less water. And now he has six hectares with more water. And you, you can see what happened here. Since he's been farming his new land and selling his produce, Nasrallah has reduced his flock. He used to have 20 sheep that grazed on the precious grasses that reduce windage and fix the sand. Today, he has only 10 sheep left and just one of his original four cows. He feeds them on forage he's grown on his land. This program of rehabilitation by allocating land is one of a number of programs run by the Iranian government. Through such programs, the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, is assisting Iran to reforest areas which are particularly affected by desertification. And for the most serious cases, the ministry has a secret weapon. for temporary fixation in the critical area, we use petroleum mulch and we spray it on the sand dunes. The petroleum mulch is one of the product of the petroleum refinery. The mulch will spray with a big gun all around. After one month, we plant the trees in the sprayed mulch area. The mulch will prevent the moving, the evaporation, and 
This is not pollution because it will removed after four years, five years, and in that time, the area is fixed with the vegetation. We remove the mulch on the sand only for digging a, a small hole. And after that, we remove the plastic bag of the seedling and we put straight the seedling in the hole, like this. Uh, it is some kind of acacia. It doesn't need water. Now, five centimeter, maybe 10 centimeter, below the root is humid just now. You can see the moisture, moisture. It is moisture under the mulch. The roots, the roots of the plant Absorb the water of the sand. چند سال بیشتر فیلم تهیه کردیم نیک پی همین جا بود. خدا را آمدش کنه. نه. Okay, this is it. This is mulch. This is plantation. This is sand dune fixation. And after that, after four or five years, we have life here. We have many, many vegetation here. We have many animals here, like birds, like lizard, like everything. And after that, the, the life is continuing. Normally associated with pollution, who would have thought that petroleum could play a role in stopping the march of the desert by fixing unstable sand dunes? NASA, the desert warrior, is proud of his country's achievements, the canats, the mulch. He's unstoppable, except when he's showing us one of the many marvels of his country, the oasis of Gamsa, for example, famous for its roses, roses as fragile as the environment when people upset its balance. This is Iranian rose. The Iranian likes the rose. Uh, I, 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 liked, I liked them so much, so much. I don't compare it with anything. <laughs> I can't compare it in anything. 